In this video, I want to prove that the gamma distribution, probability distribution function is indeed a valid probability density function. It could be a valid probability density function. This beauty over here has to integrate to 1, because the probability of all possible events within a sample space has to be 1, so it has to integrate to 1. We will be using the gamma function here. The gamma function is a recursive function. It means that it includes itself in the future permutations of that equation. So that's alpha minus 1 factorial. It's a really beautiful equation. Maybe if I have time, I'll do, one of, do a proof or something with that. I might go all those to include it here to, for this proof, this brief proof. It's very brief, actually. So this is the gamma function. So we integrate from 0 to infinity, meaning it's always positive. So in this case, it's t alpha minus 1, e to the minus t dt. That's the, the variable I choose, the t. So let's go ahead. Let's get back to our... Putative, I'll say suppose a gamma PDF, we don't know yet, we have to prove that it's a PDF. But here's our function. God, it looks beautiful, doesn't it? Notice here I replaced A minus 1 factorial with gamma alpha, because that's what that is, right? So we have 1, o and we can pull this out of the integration, because the integration doesn't involve that. These are all constant terms, so 1 over alpha to the, uh, excuse me, theta to the alpha, gamma of alpha. We can pull that out of this integration. And we're left with this bad boy over here. Now, would we like, ideally, because it kind of looks like the gamma function, so I think, me thinks, we can make it look to the gamma function pretty easily. So let's do a little substitution here. Variable substitution. So we take, we say let t, because we have a t here, and there's a t ra uh, e raised to the t, or Euler's number raised to t. So we have x over theta, so we let t equals x over theta. Then we solve for x, x equals, did I say it? Yeah, uh, yeah. Hey, right, yeah. <laughs> so I'm not sure I have my Greek letters correct. x equals t theta. And then if we take differentiate that with respect to t, we have dx equals theta d theta, right? So we can substitute that back into our equation. And this is what it looks like right here. All right, so we have that theta. So now we have t theta instead of where, where x was. Then we have theta d theta instead of dx. Now we're going to pull out all these thetas because they're not, again, they're not involved in the integration. So pull the theta a minus 1 out of here, right? So, we, so we're also pulling this theta out. So we have theta times theta a a, excuse me, alpha minus 1, and the denominator stays as it is. Now, we're, since we're multiplying these two, that means we're adding their um, their exponents. So we have alpha plus 1, and this is theta raised to the first power, so it's alpha minus 1 plus 1 equals alpha, so the 1's cancel out. So we're left with the theta alpha here. Aha! Uh -huh. Theta alpha in the bottom, so we can cross these two suckers out. And we have a gamma alpha in the denominator. And this, my friends, is, if you go back up here, is the gamma gamma function. So we can just replace the gamma function here. So these two suckers cross out. And that gives us 1. And therefore, we've proven really quickly that this gamma PDF is indeed valid because it integrates to one. Thank you very much. I hope you have a great day.